The Legend of the Golden Snail is the tale, the fantastical tale of Wilbur, a young boy who goes to sea, he's, he's following his dream, he wants to find the legendary golden snail, so he heads off planning on being a grand enchanter and winning every battle to reach that goal. And along the way he meets characters who actually need his help and he can't help himself, he, he lends assistance and halfway through he's very worried that he's been doing the wrong thing. He's not a very good Grand Enchanter at all. He, he keeps on doing the good things. But of course this pays off. When the going gets tough a little later on, each of these friends that he's made along the way come back and they help him. And finally he gets to the ends of the earth and he finds the golden snail. He finds his dream. And here's the, the final challenge for him because he realizes that the golden snail is a slave. It's, it's in, enchained. And the previous Grand Enchanter who had controlled the snail has left it there banished. And, it's his to control now, Wilbur knows, but what's he going to do? When I first came out from England to Australia, we travelled by boat, by ship. Was five weeks on the open sea, and then a few years later did it again, there and back again. So I've spent in total you know, some months uh, just out there uh, on, on, on the ocean, and it just, it really is an incredible experience. So during a, a a book which is based on a, on a sea journey. So I think it comes from way back then. Growl you may, but go you must. I think, I, I think I'd be more comfortable in the captain's quarters myself than here. The, the imagery of the golden snail is quite different, I think, to, to my, my previous books. It's much more open. It's much more to do with vast horizons and, and, and you know, infinite you know, cloudscapes and, and things like that, which was the stuff of, of the ocean experiences which I had as a youngster. Over the years, I've done books with so much detail, packed into every corner, and it's been really lovely just opening out and, and having some pages, some, some images which are, are really, really broad. There's very little going on, but just a, a huge sense of space. I have a picture in the book of just this vast, open, still ocean, uh, which, uh, which is one of Wilbur's challenges. And uh, it's one of the times when the good deeds that he's done earlier in his voyage come back and, uh, and help him bring the wind back. This is it, this is Wilbur's boat, look at that. It's a little too small for me, this one. I like slightly larger boats. Ships, I should say. <laughs> so the moral of the story really is don't, don't see the world as your enemy. Rather, see the world as, as a friend and of the people that you meet as, as people that you can help and who in turn will help you. And it's, a, I think, a, a much more uh, pleasant and, I think, successful way of realising your dreams in life. <laughs>